with me uh, again Jay Smith who's a well-known YouTuber, a Christian, um, a polemicist of Islam and a Christian apologist. He's a writer, he's an expert on the Quran, he's, his list of accolades we could be here all night really. Um, so I'm just going to jump in with a question that I've been asked and I wanted a second opinion on um, and my question to you Jay is um, courtesy of somebody who made a comment and basically their position is, their, their claim is that, as we discussed earlier, uh, Allah and Yahweh, the Arabic name for God being Allah, or the term God, um, he claims that the name Isa is used in Arabic Bibles um, to refer to Jesus, Yeshua. So I just wondered, what's your take on that? And is that true? And, and the answer is certainly that is the name that many Arabs use today, Issa, because that is the known name. Like, like the earlier argument we had with Allah, it has now become the predominant name. However, it is not the right name in Arabic. That is not the Arabic name for Jesus. Most Muslims don't know this, and that's why Muslims who are listening, you need to uh, look at and see what the correct name for Jesus is in Arabic. And the correct name in Arabic is Yeshua very similar to Yeshua in Hebrew. They're both Semitic languages. They would use the same roots. It, uh, uh, and when you ask, well, where does Yeshua, where, how can we support that? We know that the earliest Arabic Bibles, before Islam really predominated and took over the language and imposed its own names onto the language, uh, in the 8th up to the ninth century, so we're talking about six, um, eight, eight hundreds, in eight 68, a new document was found in oh, uh, St. Catherine's Monastery in the Sinai Peninsula, the same place that the Sinaiticus was found, also another Codex Sinaiticus 151, it's termed. The Codex Sinaiticus 151, and there it is the, the earliest we know of any translation of the Bible into Arabic. Now, that's the late uh -huh. century. And the name for Jesus in the Codex Sinaiticus 151 is Yeshua. Remember. As you would expect. As you would expect. But here, no, this is, the, this is the irony. The Quran, according to every Muslim, was created in the 7th century. We know it was probably created in the 8th century. So this is the 9th century, the late 9th century, a Bible in Arabic that uses Yeshua for Jesus, proving mm -hmm. that the Early Christian Arabs always knew Jesus as Yeshua. And it is That's why you Islam, it. exactly what I expected. It is Islam that took Issa and introduced Issa into the Quran. That's the first time we see Issa. We can't find Issa anywhere prior to the Quran, which suggests to me that they have taken the, the Syriac name for Jesus, Iesu, from which all these stories of Jesus have been taken. They've not only borrowed the stories, they borrowed the name and put it into Arabic because Iesha then becomes Issa in Arabic. That then, by the virtue of controlling all those lands and those areas, they then impose Issa onto all the language so that even now today in the 21st century, Arabs now use the word Issa, which is unfortunate. They need to go back to Yeshua. And so do Muslims go back to Yeshua. Do you suppose that a potential explanation for this uh, mis- translation of his name is because Muhammad was primarily uh, listening to things. He's known in the Quran or the Hadith as being a big listener. Um, do you suppose that he heard the name and mistranscribed it or misheard it? Or like, do you see my point? Like if he's just hearing- say, Absolutely, you've got it, Kay, you've yeah. got it. That's exactly what happened. I don't believe it was Muhammad, by the way. I believe it was much later. I know, yeah, sorry, when I say whoever Muhammad- wrote the you, Quran, you, Whoever wrote those stories, remember, once Abdul Malik introduces the prophet himself, Muhammad, on the coins and on the Dome of the Rock and on the Caliph of Protocols, he then has to have a book. Every prophet has to have a book. That's why they had to borrow quickly. And they borrowed from life, left, and center. And who did they borrow from? They borrowed all the Old Testament stories from the Jewish apocryphal accounts, the Talmud and the Mishnahs. Then they went to the Christians and borrowed all the Christian stories from Christian heretical sources. And almost every one of those Christian heretical sources were 
Gnostic sources who were writing in Syriac, and they bought, borrowed these stories. That's why if you look at the stories of Jesus in the, uh, the Quran, they are not stories you and I recognize. I don't recall yeah, exactly. Jesus speaking from the cradle. I don't know anywhere where Jesus made some clay, blew on them, and they flew up into the air. I don't recall anywhere where Jesus told Mary, his mother, in Surah 19, to bend, have a tree bend down to give her fruit, having her mother teaching your mother how to eat. I don't know. That's nowhere in our Bible. It's all in these Gnostic accounts. It's all in these Syriac Gnostic accounts. And in those accounts, the name for Jesus is Iesu, which then put into Arabic becomes Issa. So it comes out of borrowed material. It's a borrowed name. It's the wrong name. We do not look at the Syriac accounts as authoritative. They are nothing more than bedtime stories, just like the Hebrew, or you might say the Jewish Talmudic accounts, are nothing more than bedtime stories. Shame on those who put the Quran together. But then they had no other choice. Because remember, the Bible, both the Old and New Testament, had not been translated into Arabic until the late 9th century. The Sinaiticus uh, 151 was the first one that translated into Arabic, and that's why they didn't have access to the authoritative word. They didn't have access to the Bible. If they, only they had come back to the Bible, in whatever language and read it, they would have got the right name. They would have got the right person and they would have got the right God. And I think that's why God in his wisdom purposely wanted it to be a fraud. He wanted to make sure his name was a fraud. He wanted to make sure the name of God, his, the name for God was a fraud so that anybody looking at these two books would know which is the real one and which is the fraud. This is the real, this is the fraud. They've got the wrong God in this book. We've got the right name for God. Allah in this book, Yahweh in this book. They got the wrong name for Jesus. If they're the, here they call it Issa, we call it Yeshua. Get the right name, you get the right God. Get the right God, you get the right message. Get the right message, you can come on home. Thank you very much. I was just thinking as you were saying that, it's, it's almost as if they were working to a literary deadline, but they didn't have the source material they needed. And it's such a shame, not a shame, because it would... It would no, it would cause celestial upheaval. But the fact is that if they'd had access to it, they could have, as they claim Allah revealed the Injil and the Torah, they would have been able to substantiate their claim rather than having an author of a book who seems to have forgotten it and just come with a few like appendices or a few um, other stories that, yeah. I would suggest also that this shows to me that God in his wisdom knew what he was doing because it was obvious people like Abdul Malik and those who wanted to create this Arab identity, who wanted to attack Christianity in all its form because the Byzantine Empire was Christian. It was a political problem. It was also a theological problem. He needed something that would shut that down. And that's why he confronted Jesus Christ. That's why if you look at all the inscriptions on the Dome of the Rock, the earliest Arab, the earliest, Quran, the earliest Quranic inscriptions we can find anywhere, they're attacking Jesus as divinity, they're attacking the Trinity, and they're attacking God as Father, and they're attacking Jesus as Son. Those are the four areas. From the very beginning, they have been attacking everything we know about our Lord Jesus Christ. If that was the case, I'm glad they've got the wrong God, and I'm glad they've got the wrong yeah. Jesus. There's no other God. There There's is no, no other God. God. He knows God. of no other one, and he's all-knowing. So, you. amen. That. Great question. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks very much, Jake.